All right, Mayor, thank you. You're Great welcome, to see you. We appreciate it. I know it's next week, but we're really close to those 100 days. What is your assessment? How do you feel the first 100 days have gone? Well, it's been an incredible opportunity and journey over these last few months. The excitement and energy that you're feeling in the city of Chicago is just unprecedented. You know, what I'm most you know, um, grateful for is that no matter where I go in the city, people are asking me one question, what can we do or what can I do to help? That collaborative spirit that, that I'm leading with, people are fully embracing that. Now that we, now that I've asked one like fairly nice, let's go a little bit further. Okay. What do you say to those who say that you are doing the bidding for the Chicago Teachers Union? Well, again, I mean, look, we have brought so many people together over the course of these last 100 days. I mean, so much so that, you know, that people are embracing it. You know, the fact that we have for the first time. But that doesn't time, answer. Are you, are you there on behest of the Chicago Teachers Union? The people of Chicago voted for me. And so I'm serving the people of Chicago. And what does that look like? Bringing Chicago home. For years, that legislation has been stalled. We are now moving towards treatment, not trauma. For years, that legislation has been stalled. I mean, the fact that we're going to eliminate, um, you know, this sub-minimum wage work, you know, where black and brown women will actually get an opportunity for raises. I mean, these are policies that have been stalled for years now, and we've moved it within the first 100 days. Is Stacey Davis Gates the most inner circle? We have a full team that works directly with me, but we also have business partners, we have philanthropy, uh, we have faith-based leaders, we have the full force of government that continues to be on display. And What's I'm grateful her role? that I believe she's the president of the Chicago Teachers but Union. But what is her role with you? With she is your the president of the Chicago Teachers Union. I'm the mayor of the city of Chicago. How often do you see her and hear from her? I'm the mayor of the city of Chicago, Mary Ann. It, it, you know, by not answering that, it gives the impression that she is very much a part of your everyday decision making. I, I have um, a superintendent, an interim, and we just appointed with the expectation that we're going to have confirmation uh, for a new police superintendent, Larry Snelling. Um, we are literally bringing the entire city of Chicago together. Teachers negotiations are coming up. How much of a raise, if any, do they deserve? Well, I think at this point, it's important to know that for the first time in the history of Chicago, Chicago Public Schools, Chicago Teachers Union are actually collaborating together. We have a school board that is made up of parents, community leaders, business leaders, philanthropic leaders. We have a special education committee that but is focused race. in. I, I'm just, I don't mean to be rude, but when I have such limited time, what about the race? Do they deserve a race? So right now, you have for the first time in the history of Chicago, where you have a mayor who sends their children to the Chicago Public Schools. Making sure that we have a public school system that works for all of our families, that's what I'm committed to doing. That's a non-answer as well. The FOP, deserve the same parental leave as the teachers received? Making sure that we have a police force um, that is fully supported, building the morale. I'm confident that the new superintendent, um, that I'm looking forward to his confirmation, Chief Snelling, um, is going to continue to boost that morale. But we also have to make sure that we are providing support uh, for our police officers. What I've said repeatedly, and law enforcement agrees with me, we're asking way too much from police officers. So parental leave, they should get that as well? So treatment, not trauma, is something that is very important to, to, to making sure that police officers are not responding to mental health crises making sure that we have 200 more detectives over the course of my administration and my When's tenure. When's that gonna happen? That was my next question. Yeah, we're, we're working towards it. Listen, we have a confirmation that is coming in soon with a, a, a new police superintendent. And so we're bringing all of our stakeholders together to make sure that we have real smart constitutional policing leading towards the type of investments that are gonna be needed to ensure that public safety um, it, it's fully reached you using the full force right of away. government. The 200 detectives was really part of a campaign promise, but we haven't seen it yet. Well, again, we have a new police superintendent that's going to be confirmed. And I know that there are people, some people, that are accustomed to a dictatorial style of governance. That is not my style. And so it's going to be the full responsibility of our leadership within our police department to help us come up with a full strategy around community safety that does not require simply police intervention, but it also takes into account how we have sergeants, lieutenants, commanders, chiefs, detectives, all working towards the same goal.
Whether you call them mob, uh, a mob action or large team takeover, when property is destroyed, when cars are vandalized, when businesses are robbed, what should the police do? Well, as you know, with the last gathering that took place, there were 40 arrests. And what I'm grateful for, though, is that police officers in that situation displayed an enormous amount of restraint. And I know that wasn't easy, and I appreciate that level of restraint that was on full display. And so again, as I've said repeatedly, we do not condone any behavior that is criminal. We don't, behave, we don't condone any of that. But we also have to make sure that we're committed to investing in people, and that's what I'm committed to doing. On another topic, COVID cases are rising. Our Wadi's gone strategically. What did her firing accomplish? This is the last thing I'm gonna say on this. And I've been reluctant to talk about this in public because I don't believe it's right to discuss personnel or decisions to terminate someone publicly. I believe that's morally not right. That is it. I know that there are some people. Well, I was asking about COVID, okay, so well, now what do we do? We don't have a health commissioner. You, you asked about our firing. Right. That's what you asked about. So I said, what did it accomplish? And, so, and, and we so, have COVID cases. So again, I know that there are some people that are accustomed to a combative approach to how we do politics in the city of Chicago. I've been reluctant to speak about the termination of an employee publicly because I don't believe that's morally right. Okay, so now we have a health department without a leader and the medical director is about to leave and we have COVID cases rising. How, who's going to run the health department? So the health department is being fully ran by the person who um, who has now assumed the role. And we're going to continue to make sure that we're putting forth all of the, the, the practices um, as well as the, 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 the strategic necessary interventions to make sure that we are mitigating um, the expansion uh, or proliferation of COVID. Migrants even more have arrived in the last week. We have aldermen who are concerned. They're talking about crimes that are being committed. If you've walked, as I did yesterday, down State Street, it's not safe. What's going on and when, what are you going to do to get help move, perhaps have the suburbs, as you mentioned, to help you out? Well, look, everyone is participating in working towards addressing this humanitarian crisis. The state of Illinois, um, and I appreciate the support of Governor Pritzker, the board president, Cook County Board President, Tony Preckwinkle, as well as the full force of government here in the city of Chicago. Since I've been in office, 90 more buses have arrived. Thousands of families continue to show up over the course of, 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 of these last 90 days. And so what I've said repeatedly, and I'll say it again, that we're committed to making sure that what was passed 40 years ago by Mayor Harold Washington to make sure that the city of Chicago is a sanctuary city, that we're gonna continue to embrace that. And so we're gonna continue to make sure, like we've been doing, to, to expand shelters, and we've, had, we've put 10 more shelters on, on, online since I've been in office, and of course, we're gonna continue to work uh, to move people out of police stations because we know that police stations, um, that is not an ideal place for people to actually You're thanked, Preckwinkle, but yet at the same time, what has she done to help you on this? Well, there's been full participation by Governor Pritzker and the board president. The board president has been very helpful in providing um, medical support, and healthcare services, providing transportation for our migrants. And so look, there's a lot of work to be done, but here's the part that I'm clear about. We've laid a very clear foundation in the city of Chicago over the course of these 90 days. I'm fully aware of what I inherited, whether it's climate injustice, whether it's the fact that our public schools have not been fully supported, the fact that we have not had a full plan to address the migrant uh, dynamic in the city of Chicago, public safety, all of these dynamics have been um, a part of the infrastructure in the city of Chicago for decades. Once upon a time, as you know, 900 murders annually. This last administration, upwards of 700 murders. These are challenges we have all over the country. And what I'm excited about in this moment 
is that the city of Chicago is fully embracing the collaborative spirit that I promised and I ran on. And it's going to take all of us. There's not one person, there's not one department that can solve the challenges that we have right now. But the best part about the city of Chicago is that, is that the city of Chicago, the people of Chicago, are committed to transformation. I'm grateful that people have actually stepped up, particularly with migrants, to provide mutual aid and support for families. The fact that, again, that we're bringing entities together to solve these dynamics within our education system, that's the exciting part about being the mayor of the city of Chicago. I think I heard her say last question. Can I squeeze in one on CTA? What, are you pleased with the leadership of, of Dorville College? All of our departments, our sister agencies, are, are being uh, fully assessed and evaluated. And as my, my team, um, my senior advisor, my deputy chief of staff, my chief of staff, my chief operation officer, these are the individuals that, that will bring a full assessment and analysis of all these departments and they will make decisions accordingly. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.